beautiful day to beat the sun up. Rise and grind and greet your day. Put something new in that coffee cup. Live your life the 6S way. Stay safe, stay sane, stay sexy. Try that new morning routine. And follow your curiosity with RK. It is too early for that note. Hello, everybody. Hello. Did you get the thumbnail I sent you uploaded? Otherwise, I can upload it now. No, it's all good. I have it. Um, and I had to just open it on my computer because the stream wasn't showing up on my phone. So it'll be up in like two minutes. Okay, cool. Yeah, I'm sorry about that. Guys, I thought I scheduled the stream yesterday. I'm sorry that it wasn't scheduled ahead of time. I thought I did. I made the thumbnail like right after the stream was over and thought I scheduled it, but something must have gone wrong and I didn't double check it because I haven't been on the computer at all. So I apologize for that. I'm so sorry. Tomorrow's Dude. will be scheduled uh, way in advance. It makes no difference. Most of the regulars are here and uh, it's not like we started a war in Eastern Europe. So I think we're doing okay. <laughs> I guess we're doing okay. And I apologize, guys. I'm eating my breakfast and taking my medicine right now, too, because I had a rough morning. I was a little bit all over. I had a rough morning. We'll just say that. Difficult morning. Poor Savvy. Ah, it's not lit. There we go. I'm getting this up. Awesome. We're good to go. Awesome. Good morning, everyone. I'm sorry if I had a rough morning. What's up? Or, or is oh, this just... something we're talking about now on live? I mean, I can talk, I mean, I guess I've been very open with what I'm doing medically on live. Just basically, I took a laxative for the first time. That's what happened. I did that yesterday. So I spent a half an hour on the toilet this morning. It was awful. It was the worst experience. Did you do Duolingo on the toilet? I did. I did do Duolingo oh, nice. and the Wordle and the Quirtle. I got a lot of, I did a lot of puzzles. Wait, what's the, the Quirtle? The Quirtle is like Wordle, but there's four of them. It's... It's really cool. Hold on, I'll pull it up. Please do while the um, thumbnail. Okay. I, thumbnail yeah, I had the most painful morning on the toilet of all time, and then I. Did you make a I, um, a vine going sitting on the toilet? No, dude, sitting I should have. I should have. I should have. I should have put that on TikTok. <laughs> you should have um, absolutely put that on Reels, on TikTok, on I Snapchat, on myself everything. On the toilet. And then after that, I was behind schedule to take a shower and get all my bandages put on my boobs and all of that. So I was just behind. So that's why I'm still eating breakfast and taking medicine now. I appreciate all of your patience. This is Cordal. It's, uh, it's, there's four different words that are five letters long of the day. And you guess, each word you guess counts for all of them. You have nine total guesses to get all four words. And when you guess a word, it's just, so example, let's say, give me a five letter word. A do, A D I E U. Okay. So it's, it does it for all four of them. And so then you know this word has an E somewhere in it. This word, the E is right here. This word has an A D E. So I will, I got it this morning. So I'm not going to ruin it for other people. But. This is how Quartal works. I highly recommend it. I think it's fun. I think it's really fun. It's a challenge. It looks like fun. It looks like a challenge. It My is. big news was I woke up this morning and there's a reality TV show on Netflix called 20 Somethings Austin, which is basically like Jersey Shore Austin or the real world Austin. And oh, okay. I replied to one of the women on its story because she was singing We Don't Talk About Bruno. And uh, I said, thanks, this is now stuck in my head all day. And, you know, she sent me back a kissy face. So I guess I guess we're flirting now. I'm assuming she's a hot mom. No. 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 She's a 20-something in Austin. That's the show. Oh, I guess that's true. <laughs> she seems a little young for you. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I guess they can be moms in their 20s, but we talked about this yesterday. You have to... Yeah, yeah. <laughs> It's mother plus age equals milk. 
Absolutely. Absolutely. So good morning, everyone. Good morning, Lori. Good morning, Cher. Good morning, Kat. Good morning, Aubrey. Um, good morning, Kayla. Good morning, Jennifer. Good morning. Is that, how do I say that? Gre Graysel? It says Amelia Grace. Is it Gr Gr Grace? Is that a pen too? Is 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 Amelia Grace the pen name or is Gr Gr Grace? Oh, is that a pen? I can't see the, the emojis on here. It could be a wand. They could be a wizard. Jen Dobre, Danny, Vitae. Hello, Ellen. Hello, Shelby. Oh, I still oh, remember Jen's Polish from yesterday. Our... Did you learn Polish yesterday? Yeah, I still remember DJ Chomsky. G DJ Chomsky. That's DJ exactly. Chomsky. That's, that's my name. Correct. <laughs> uh, I'm happy to hear this. Yeah, Jen's wearing the Your Morning Guru hoodie. That's so exciting. That's amazing. Hold on. I'm going to plug all the merch. Look at me. This is send us I your P.O. box and we'll send you a t-shirt cannon so you can go to the drag bar and just shoot shirts at everyone. Like I it's a sporting a event. Cannon, dude, I wish we had a t-shirt cannon. I wish we had a t-shirt so cool. cannon. <laughs> You'd have so much fun with that. When uh, I visit in Chicago, I'll drive and uh, you. We can. I'll drive my car and you can just sit out the window and shoot t-shirts. Okay. Okay. That sounds fun. That sounds fun. Um. So y'all, this is the hoodie that Jen is wearing right here. This one, your morning guru hoodie. It's a good We've hoodie. Got some a good color. New merch things too. We've got the sixty nine nice challenge and the water weed and weights, and of course the wonderful really, Campbell Sean Boston mug. I really love the blue that you went with for us. It's a very calming blue. Thank you. Someone mentioned we got to put the water weed and weights one on a water bottle, and I completely agree. I got to agree work with on that. that. That will that will happen. Or a bong, like a weighted and then bong. This is then the it's mug all I'm drinking out of today. Shout out to this mug that I'm drinking out of today. It's a good Guys, looking check mug. It out. This is the mug I'm drinking out of today. I'm gonna cover the brand so they're not a sponsor. Yeah, they didn't sponsor see. us. They don't deserve any promo. <laughs> yeah, exactly. I, I I am ordering. I ordered your promo to help you. Know, I'm, I'm eating going. breakfast from a thing that does sponsor me, but <laughs> not for the. Sh we need to get some sponsors on this stream. Lola, give us a chocolate duck so you can say shout out to Lola's chocolate ducks. <laughs> I love the 69 nice hood. Uh, I just have too many hoodies. Okay, well, that's a lie. There's no such thing as having too many hoodies, but I understand not wanting to buy more shit right now. So no, I there's respect absolutely that. such a thing as having too many hoodies. We learned this in Marie Kondo week. If, if you have too ho many hoodies, not all of them are going to spark joy. No, I, I think could, hoodies like, always really spark joy. Hoodies. That yeah. could be... Oh, a hoodie is like wearing a hug, dude. I also don't believe that you have that many hoodies either. You have like three hoodies that I've ever seen you wear. I don't have many clothes because every time I date someone or even flirt with them, magically clothes disappear. Oh. Yeah. That's fair. I've, I've worn like six of Tyler's shirts this past week. I don't know where any of but my sweatpants fair, are. To be fair, I'm married to him, so I think I'm allowed to do that at this point. I'll I'll, I'll go, like, two weeks without sweatpants, and I'll, and I'll be, like, really wanting to wear a pair of sweatpants, and they'll all be in the dirty laundry. And I was like, I have not worn a single one of these in a month. <laughs> what the fuck? That's so frustrating. <laughs> I know. <laughs> but it's okay, because Logan's naked all the time, and that just puts things in perspective. Yeah. Tyler never borrows my clothes. I wish he would, but... I'm also, like, a lot smaller than him, so he wouldn't fit in any of them. Mama wants the water <laughs> wear you can't wear it publicly. You can say, like, your your gardener, that's all. Yeah, it's like it's like the book, Water, Weed, and Weight, that you posted in the, the subreddit. Yeah, exactly. It can be, like, in that, uh, that Monty Python skit where it's like, I told them we already had one. I don't know how Good it fits morning, in, but that was the vibe cool I got. Gamer. Good morning, Kayla, saying that the interactive Netflix cartoon? I don't know that one. Oh, someone said Hib Hib mentioned Hibetica earlier, too. I know you're oh, talking yeah, about that Oh, yeah, where I was going to make that the theme for tomorrow. I was going to put that in. I was I had all these themes planned that I was going to put in the thumbnails, and then it turns out I just completely failed to schedule the stream, or, like, it failed to upload or something. I don't know what happened. I remember scheduling it. YouTube's well, mad maybe... at you, because... You built up this huge audience on boobs, and now it's like, where did they go? Yeah, YouTube's mad at me. They're like, um, excuse me. Excuse me. 
<laughs> Guys, I posted my before and after pics in Reddit uh, because Discord wouldn't let me post them, which is wild because they're not nudes. I covered the female presenting nipples. I don't like, know what's in. I showed these pictures to my mom. They're not nudes. So I don't know what happened, but they're in Reddit. I hate that there's something in my water bottle right there that I can't reach. I don't see it at all. You don't see that little speck? Oh, I do. I thought that was just a shadow. No, it's a speck and it can't get it. And I'm nervous to drink my water because what if it's something that's alive and it's going to kill me? It's not alive. I can. I don't think it's alive. Good morning, Devastatia. Good morning, Kate. Good morning, Melody. Um, hey, my mom's here. Good morning, mom. Good to Sup, see Lola. you. Guys, I ate more boob cake last night. My mom made the best boob cake my mom made me so much food. I also ate Sloppy Joe. She made me Sloppy Joe's and boob cake and just so much stuff. So I've just been not having to cook at all. It's really great. Good morning, Lindsay. Magdalena says, good afternoon from Scotland. Good afternoon. That's awesome. Hello, Joanne. Good morning. Good morning, Clary T. Oh, my mom's been eating the Magic Spoon cereal, too. She has a peanut butter one. Oh, we're mentioning the name? Okay, so I got. Well, I, yeah, I wish. Here's the thing: I only want. I wish they would sponsor this stream, but they sponsor. They sponsor a lot of my YouTube videos, so uh, yeah. And I'm eating it right now, so like, this stream is not sponsored. Disclaimer, but Friday's video is. Sorry, guys. I'm, I'm gonna edit extra. a video again today. Today's my first day doing any work and i'm just gonna edit videos which is easy work because it's just sitting in the chair doing it um i'm gonna work on editing my video for friday today and tomorrow which is the video that savannah marie and i made together of the two of us going into the savvy recruitment zoom call she's been working on editing her part of it too because there were two calls so we have two videos we have one on each of our channels so Friday's going to be a lot of fun, guys. You're getting a new video from me and from Savannah Marie, and they're both videos of us sneaking into the Savvy Zoom call together. So Friday's going to be a lot of fun. That's the only work task I gave myself this week is to finish editing that video. And I started it last week. Oh, so I have time for that. So I think, I think we're going to be okay. It's long, though. It's long. So I'm not that, like, I still got a lot to go. But I'm going to work on that today and tomorrow. So I think we'll be good. I'm going to respond morning, to this Brenda. call out real quick. Stop being a snowflake. Uh, yeah, they live off the land. I live in a city with boil water advisory, so I get paranoid when I see shit in my water. <laughs> Emery says, good, good morning, you handsome son of a gun. We love to see it. Good morning. Good morning, sodium and spite. Yeah, it's cold. Okay, I was enjoying the fact that the weather was nice. And I was like, okay, I have to do a lot of walking. I'm going to take Chewy on walks. Tyler's going to hold the leash. We're going to go on these beautiful walks. It was like 40 degrees this week, a couple days. And now today is back to 17 degrees. That's not cool. Oh, it's dude, same. March. Hmm? Wait, no, you said 17. Never mind. Is it 70 where you are? Oh, it's 72. 15. Actually. It's 15 now. It's 72. It is 15 I'm sorry, degrees dude. here. This is why you should be living in New Orleans through March. Next year, man. Just let me know when you have the duplex. I have it. Let's go. Um, plates no, you to don't. Wait is a fantastic <laughs> Unless name. you mean that I can move into the other half of your house and your other tenant's going to move out. I don't know. Well, he. I don't know if he's going to stick around after he graduates grad school or not. Okay. Well, if he if he's not staying, then let me know and I'll I'll move in there for January through March. Yeah, I'll spend three months in New Orleans. I'll stay through Mardi Gras next year. There we go. See, uh -huh. that sounds like such a better use of life. I'll do that, and I'll escape this this awful cold. Yeah. So suck it. You and then sucking. before it gets too hot, I'll come back. Uh. Anyway, I do like this name, Plates to Waits. Plates to Waits! That's fun! I love things that rhyme, dude. Anything Same. that rhymes, I'm just like... It could be the most cursed thing in the world, but if it rhymes, I'm like, Ah, it rhymes! <laughs> it rhymes! And if it's alliteration and rhymes? I mean, that's like a leprechaun showing you it's gold. Yeah, I'm very easily amused, guys, and I'm very easy to please, so don't, don't, uh, Wait, you identify don't ever have as to think too retriever. hard about, yeah. What's up, Liz? <laughs> What's up, Andrea? Good to see you guys. 
Uh, oh, you, uh, yeah, I should have been working my business on the toilet like an MLM boss babe. I should have been doing business. Where's Savannah? I talked about poop like in excruciating detail this morning, and she's not here yet. Where are you in the comments? Um, oh, oh, wait, Savannah is here. I'm just behind in the comments. Hey, Savannah, what's up? That's the per yeah. When I talk about poop, I Savannah fest her. I love it. I shouldn't have. I shouldn't have showed you Savannah was here. I should have said, "Up, oh, no, Savannah's not here." Tell us how you feel. Yeah, you should have. Yeah, you should. You should have. You should have <laughs> let me go on just, thinking she wasn't her. here. What's up, Savannah? Guys, I'm so excited for me and Savannah's collab video on Friday. It's gonna be hilarious. It is really funny. We spent a long time. We spent uh, two days filming for like two or three hours at a time and we just have like all of this hilarious shit like it's a really funny fucking video so you guys are gonna enjoy it i'm very excited for it shout out to savannah for doing that with me i'm excited to see it too y'all are gonna kill it y'all are funny together and i completely agree it's sodium and spite right here on uh alliteration yeah completely what's up Kristen? good to see you what's up gremily good morning gamers love to see it yeah uh good morning starry night good morning ember good morning laura um ember there's competitive wordle how do you do that or do you just like make a discord and then try to compete to see who can get the get it the fastest or something um, i feel like it should be fastest after the first one because if you get it first try that's not skill that's luck, yeah. It's luck That's if you get it on the. Luck. I've never got it on the first one. I have got it on the second one like a couple times. I do. Um, I I do the same words or the same two words every time. I either do a do because you get four vowels or house because you get three vowels and an s h. The word I always do first is first. I always use first first because you have the r s and t which are fairly common letters. And then well, aren't you magical? I've been playing it on hard mode lately. So there's the second word, mode? yeah, there's hard mode. If you turn it on to hard mode, when you do the first, what, whenever you get a hint, like whenever you get like a letter right, you have to use it in the next guess. You can't guess a word that doesn't include what you got right already. Oh. So like if I guess first and the T, there's a T somewhere in it, my next guess has to have a T in it. I so mean, you that's... can't just think of other words. Yeah, it can be hard sometimes. Oh, absolutely. I mean, I love doing words that don't have any of the previous letters in it. If I'm really early, and my guess is just to knock out another five letters. Yeah, so the first, when I'm doing Quirtle, there's no hard mode on it, of course, because there's four different words. Um... Oh. <laughs> I remember that conversation. I yeah. feel a little. I feel a little violated knowing that it was recorded without my permission. Is this how? I'm is this sorry. how always Marcos yeah, victims feel? I remember, so Savannah and I were recording for the video, and we were talking about edible leggings, and I was like, "That needs to exist in our book." Hold on, I don't want to forget. So I pulled out my phone and I voice texted Arcade to be like, "Hey, so there's these edible leggings that you can get." And I was <laughs> talking to him about that. <laughs> well, well oh I remember God, that crazy. conversation very clearly. Oh, yeah, no, I, 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 I don't actually feel bothered by it. I'm just kidding. I swear. I, I'm sure it's funny. I um, I just am making... Okay, wait, what's this? I guess I've been doing self-imposed... Yeah, that sounds like Aaron. Yeah, if you turn on that setting, then it won't let you guess it otherwise, but I guess you can just play it that way on your own. Oh, I like it when you scream laugh. <laughs> Did I scream laugh? I guess something really funny happened. I don't remember now. Did you say something funny in response? I always say something funny in response. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, guys, yeah, these okay. videos are going to be funny. I'm excited. I'm excited that um, my return to doing work is with this collab because it's very funny. And then next week, I'm going to do a vlog about the breast reduction process. It depends on what kind of uh, edibles they are. I mean, I'm assuming that they're gummies, but they could be yeah. salads. RK immediately jumps to the edible leggings have weed in them. Well, because they're edibles. <laughs> <laughs> anything edible, of course, means it has weed. No, it's not anything edible has weed. It's anything that's described as edible has weed. Sort of like how everything oh. described as not an MLM is an MLM. Like, this is what we're doing. It's a good point. Exactly. Good morning, caffeinated angel. Good morning, Mariah. Go faux hog yourself. Ahoy, you beautiful son of a gun. Um, 
Okay, yes, we are going to, yeah, tomorrow I think we're going to do a day about playing Habitica and see how that works. Um, because I downloaded it. I'm excited to give it a try tomorrow. I've been doing pretty well with my habits. Let's, uh, let's see. Oh, Jedi Dick Sensei. <laughs> that's a funny name. That's a great name. That's what, the, the, that's a name that just belongs on the internet. I know Discord allows nudes if it's an 18 plus server, but it wasn't nudes. I, I, I blocked out my nipples, which is already more than I should have to do because that's just plain misogynistic if Discord considers a naked top half of a woman a nude, but not of a man. And I blocked out the nipples anyway, just to go above and beyond and play their little sexist game. And even that was too much for them. Although to be fair, we haven't had a man try to post a naked top half picture. So maybe it would do the same to a man. If it would, then I will take back what I said about Discord being misogynistic. Okay, Joe, post a shirtless pic. <laughs> <laughs> do it for us. Uh, let's see, where are we now, Sabsicles? Or are we Making just go, sure diving I say in? hello to everyone. Friday Greenlaw saying, I look great. Thank you. Thank you. For, first of all, Friday Greenlaw is a cool ass name. And I appreciate that. Guys, yeah, I've been, I've been feeling pretty great. People keep commenting on my photos to say I look more like myself. And they're like, I know this is weird to say, but you look more like yourself. And I'm like, you're right, I do. Like, it is weird to say because the only myself I looked like before was before the surgery. But I do feel like I look more like myself now. Well, this is this is what you look like when you're not, you know, battling 15 pounds of weight. So you're just relieved. Oh, yeah. So everyone who said <laughs> I look like I lost more than 10 pounds, it's actually 12 pounds. After I finally pooped, I lost two more pounds. <laughs> because I had not been able to poop for like since Thursday until this morning. And I lost, I weighed myself again and I was like, yep, I lost two pounds again. Okay. So it was really more probably like 12 pounds of boobs. Although I have my checkup today at the doctor and they'll tell me how much boobs they actually took off officially. So you're going to say it was like only a pound and then like the other 11. Yeah. They're going to be like, we took off one pound of boob and I'll be like, what the fuck? <laughs> <laughs> Where did everything else go? Poop. Um, it was all, it was all in the massive shit you took this morning. It was all in that massive shit you took. <laughs> Your, your, your scale at home is just off. You pooped out 10 pounds this morning. <laughs> <laughs> Probably felt like it. Oh, yes. Yeah, Savannah finished editing. That's awesome. That's awesome. I gotta say, I really like that we've entered this part of a live stream where we have regulars who have rather iconic names, like Toilet Frog. Yes. You know, just, just pure internet names. I mean, don't get me wrong. I love Ileana Rodriguez. But that's a on. wonderful name. Ileana it's a wonderful Rodriguez name. It's a beautiful name. But that, that's that, that's an that's an in real life name. I, I love that we've entered this realm of getting a combination of beautiful in real life names and beautiful like Jedi dick names. Right. And it's like we know that person by that name now. So it's like, oh, yeah, that's our friend Toilet Frog. And someone will be like, well, what's Toilet Frog's like name that you would call them at work? Toilet. You know, Toilet. <laughs> TG or T or TF. Dr. No, I Frog? I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> I have no idea. Good morning, Tanya. Say good morning. Good afternoon from Winter Wonderland. We got some snow yesterday, too, so I'm wondering if we're going to get more. Is this real? Is this like actual oh, they're from, They live in Helsinki? Oh, I, I doubt it. Is this someone trolling us by making their name Tampax, or is this the Tampax brand trying to advertise in our stream? I'm willing to bet it's someone trolling. If it's someone trolling, that's pretty funny. <laughs> All right, guys. We've got a lot of fun stuff to talk about. Negative 22. Damn, Jennifer, that sounds awful. Oh, this is where we talked about how cold it is. Sorry, guys, I get way off topic. Um, is there going to be a Sim stream Saturday? I don't know. Maybe. I haven't decided. We'll yet. decide on Saturday. We'll decide on Saturday. That's how we usually do it. It'll be Saturday. And we're like, do we want to play? Do we feel like playing The Sims now? Okay, let's Do play we feel Sims. like doing something? <laughs> yeah. No, the bigger question is when we start the Wednesday streams again for cancels Elise Shiloh. Yes, that should be next Wednesday, like a week from today, is my goal for that. Because I want to start the writing streams again. I just don't want to do it tonight. Yeah, no, I get that. We could also do a cancel Elise Shiloh thing on Saturday. Yeah, we could do a, a writing stream on Saturday or something. I do want to work on writing Cancel Lee Shiloh because I keep having so many good ideas for it. 
And I you feel like RK, like RK does too. We just keep coming up with great ideas and being like, oh my god, this is going to be so great in the book. No, the universe keeps supplying us with great ideas that is me that are just meant to be put in this book. Mm-hmm. Because literally all my ideas are, so this happened online today, so it's now in our book. Yeah, exactly, exactly. Um, so how are you doing with your habits? Tell me about your habits. I listened to more of Atomic Habits yesterday, but I, I'm going to listen to more of it today. My habits? I mean, I right now I'm just mostly focusing on, <laughs> I, I guess I, my, my good habit is I'm, I'm making it further into the newspaper before I start work in the morning. Like uh, mm -hmm. I, I've established that I need to have at least an hour before I start any sort of client work to digest all of the morning news. So I've gotten in the habit of reading the newspaper for an hour every morning, which I like. Um, Logan for about three miles a day of walking is a reg pretty regular habit right now that I like just because I'm able to do that while I'm recovering with my knees. And then right now I'm only doing BJJ twice a week just to take it easy on my knees, but I really want to get that up to five days a week. Doing BJJ twice a week with your knee struggling is still a lot, dude. That's like, oh, don't well, don't hurt yourself. No, I, I took this week off. Oh, you took this week off. Gotcha. Yeah. And then you're going to no, do twice a week before. next week. Yeah. That's, okay, that's, that's good you took this week off, yeah. Yeah. Um, my, my, knee, my knees feel great. I mean, it, it sort of hurt me in the middle of the night because I had to sleep in an awkward position because Logan's an asshole who I love. Um, mm -hmm. But, no, they feel good. I'm, I'm ready. I'm ready to fight. Yesterday, I only got 11,000 steps. I really want to get 20,000. And yesterday, I did, like, I paced around while listening to Atomic Habits a lot. Like, I was, I listened to an audible and paced up and down the hallway because, again, walking is the only exercise I'm allowed to do right now. And I also, like, we were watching The Great British Bake Off, and I would just, like, pace back and forth in front of the TV while we're watching The Great British, British Bake Off. And with all that, I still only got 11,000 steps. I think mm -hmm. our walks with Chewy were a little shorter because the weather wasn't very good it was like raining and then then it came, became really cold um so that wasn't as good but i gotta do one of my habits right now which is that every day i'm logging my food to send it to cat there's an app that because guys if you don't know i hired cat as my dietitian she's awesome she's the greatest dietitian in the world i highly recommend her um, and her name is cat and her name is Cat, uh, and she's in the chat. See that rhymes. Cat in the chat. Um, so I need to enter my breakfast because this is what I was. Yeah, because Cat was telling me right. I gotta get a lot of protein every day so I don't lose my gains while I can't lift after surgery. Yeah, to get twenty thousand steps, I feel like yeah. Because when I pace back and forth in the apartment, even for like if I do it for a while, even if I'm listening to an audiobook, after like twenty minutes, it gets really boring. <laughs> so I stop. Yeah, you gotta um, enter the zone. Or else you're yeah, fucked. walking, going on a walk, it's like you don't even have to do anything else. It's just so nice. All right, so I ate breakfast, and what I ate for breakfast, I ate one cup of oh, I totally forgot cereal. What? Yesterday, someone took my credit card information online and ordered $51 of Chipotle in California. What? Yeah, what? So I had to quickly freeze it. I think I'm not getting charged for it. I have to wait three days where I can dispute it, but I froze it before they actually, like, they ordered it online, and I froze it. So I think they went to Chipotle to pick it up, and the credit card got declined because I froze it. But I know who you are, Jen, and I know your shitty Chipotle order, Jen. And why the fuck did you get a large guacamole on my credit card, Jen? And who the fuck gets orange juice at Chipotle, Jen, in California? Orange juice at Chipotle? Yeah, that's a Californian thing to do. Yeah, she fucking sucks. So I definitely am excited to... I, I hope she's a Lakers fan because I want to ruin her. <laughs> <laughs> well, I'm glad you got your, your card freezed and all of that. I, I'm glad you were able to take care of that. That's always really scary. I've had my card information stolen a couple of times before, and it's like the worst. It's the scariest feeling in the world. I hate that. You got 2x chicken on both orders, too. The bowl and the burrito. Like, what a fucking asshole. 
Yeah, doing that with someone else's credit card, like, hmm, I'm gonna get the, I'm gonna get all the extras. I'm gonna get extra chicken. I'm gonna get and extra a large guacamole. walk. Like, fuck you, and I hope orange you... juice. Because why the fuck not? This is someone else's credit card. Uh, oh, and a grapefruit juice. A you grapefruit fucking juice? grapefruit juice at Chipotle. At Chipotle. Ew. I fucking hate That's this. Not right. Yeah, her name's That's Jen. That's not right. She got the Chipotle order at. Uh, I have the address of it because it was a pickup. She didn't order it to her address. But, um, yeah, I'm looking to judge the All fuck right, out so of her. Lindsay is, I guess, is in California and is telling us that she would never order. So this is not a California thing. This is just a fucking weirdo thing. Oh, I don't actually have anything against California. I just, like, I, I, have, I have shit against the Lakers in L.A., so I talk shit about California. It makes sense to me. Wait, also, Blake's fuck the ring. Wait, Blake's name is also Cat. We officially have, what, like, four cats that come to our chat now? Oh, one second, I have to hop off, but one second. Also, okay, I love cats, fine. except for Remy. But I love him too. I love Remy. Um, yeah, so uh, Kat, I'm logging everything in the in the app that you sent me, and so I for for the this whole week I've been putting everything I'm eating in the app. Uh, and there should be enough carbs. I should be getting enough protein and carbs and vegetables. I should be getting enough of all the food groups. Uh, I guess, guys, I'm gonna meet with Kat next week, and she's gonna tell me if I'm doing it right. <laughs> We'll see. We'll see. Um, I love how CA could be California or Canada and RK will shit talk both of them. And we love that. So guys, today, let's take a look at some varying opinions about Atomic Habits on Goodreads. Um, that's what I put in the thumbnail, which I guess I, it had failed to upload and I never checked because I was just on the couch all day yesterday. Uh, having a good time. Here we go. Atomic Habits. Let's see. I figured we should look at some reviews, both good and bad, of this book. I always enjoy doing that because, you know, we have our opinions on it, and the chat will have their opinions, but we don't want it to just be one opinion. I thought what was really nice with The Seven Habits, which was our first book discussion last month, what was really nice was how we had some people, some of you guys who read it, who liked it and thought it was helpful and thought there was some good stuff. And then there were some people who hated it and thought it was awful. And, you know, I personally, I gave the book probably three stars. I think that it had some good advice. I thought the advice about, you know, seek to understand first, then to be understood. I thought that was a good habit. I thought that it broke down some things in an interesting way and came from a genuine place. But I also thought there were some examples of things that were very ableist in it. I also thought that there were some some things that kind of tokenized people. I thought that the way things were written wasn't wasn't very kind in some ways. So I think that there, I kind of had a mix of things and it was nice to see that there were a variety of opinions with you guys as well. I never want our book club discussions to be like, you guys just have to think the same thing we think about a book. I want all of us to be able to bring our various perspectives and life experiences to our book discussions so that we can have a really uh, interesting time breaking it down. Oh, by the way, guys, this Friday, this Friday is going to be our book club discussion on Atomic Habits. So anyone who's read it, I know a bunch of you guys in the chat have mentioned that you're reading it. So uh, you'll be welcome to join in on the stream on Friday. We'll bring people on and have a discussion like we did with Seven Habits last month. And then uh, we'll decide what next month's book club book is going to be because we don't know yet. I think we might do something by Brene Brown. I'm not sure yet. That's something we've talked about. Um, let's see. What's up, Willie the Silly? Good to see you here. What's up, Not That Kate? What's up, Torin Tor? I want to make sure I say your name right. I'm going to mispronounce it. I'm so sorry. Torin Torilfa. Nice to see you. Um, thank you, Willie. Yes, everyone liked the stream. So I'm going to take a look at some views on Atomic Habits because I think I'm, I gave this book four stars when I read it. Yeah, I did. Oh, it's right here on my Goodreads. I gave this book four stars. Uh, I think there were some, I don't think it was perfect, but I think it was good. And, you know, on Friday, I'll go more into my opinions about it. But I thought in a lot of ways, it provided a good antidote to a lot of the guru shit we see, because I was able to identify when listening to it, like, oh, this sounds like something a guru would say. But the way this book approaches it actually makes practical sense. 
it's not about magic or something like that. So I think it kind of gave a lot of context to the things that gurus try to tell us, but it did so in a way that made it actually make a little more sense. And it seems like a lot of the gurus are just trying to turn things into just magic, you know? Uh, hey, what's up, Bad Astro? What's up, Cena? Good to see y'all. Good to see y'all. Um, um, is it worth buying? I, I personally, I use an Audible credit on it because I, I subscribe to Audible. So that's what I used it for. Um, so if, uh, I think it's worth it, but it's going to be different for everyone. I, I think, I think it's, I think it was helpful. I think I've been able to put a lot of its ideas into practice. Oh, the subtle art of not giving a fuck. I have read that. I read that book a long time ago. I gave it three stars. I liked some parts and disliked other parts. That will be a book I think we should discuss at some point because uh, it's there's there's some things in it that I really don't like and some things in it that I really do like. I think it's a mixed bag, kind of like Seven Habits. I think so far a lot of the books we've been reading for book club we, uh, weeks are the ones that are uh, you know, got some good things, got some bad things. They kind of have a mix as opposed to being something that's just like all snark on it, which isn't as fun for a book club discussion, in my opinion. I think a book club discussion is more fun if we can go a little deeper. All right. That's what I think. Okay. Apparently Brene Brown's Atlas of the Heart is good. Yeah. I think we can do a week on, maybe we'll do a week on Brene Brown to end next month. Um, hold up. I've got my little notes in here. So, okay, I think for the end of next month, we were considering either doing Brene Brown Week and doing a book by her or doing Dale Carnegie Week and doing How to Win Friends and Influence People, which is, I guess, like one of the original self-help books. So we could take a look back at like where the, the self-help industry started. Uh, we'll also have to read some of the early ones eventually too, like uh, Power of Positive Thinking and Think and Grow Rich and things like that. Um, but yes, so that is, that's what we're going to consider for next month. Laura says the seller of not giving a fuck is something I'd love to talk about. I loved it years ago in my self-help MLM cringe period of life, but now I'm sure I'd find it overall problematic. Yeah, I, I read this. I was already making some like anti-self-help videos at the time that I read it. I read it in probably 2018, 2019. And... I thought it was good for contextualizing why certain people value things that don't matter. Like, I think the, I think the subtle art of not giving a fuck is a great way. You know, when we talk about like fucking Nancy at the HOA meeting, right? When we've talked about like those people, I think the book is a good example of why those people care about this bullshit. I think it gives good examples of how people come to value things. And I think it gave like some good context for that. But overall, I didn't find the ideas in it that helpful. Like, I didn't find much of a good takeaway from it. Good morning, Katie. What's up? Um, oh, we should also do, what is it? Like, the, Malcolm Gladwell's book about uh, perfecting things in 10,000 hours or something. What's that one called? I can't remember. That might be a good one. Uh, anyway, so let's take a look at some people's reviews of Atomic Habits, because like I've said, overall, I like it. I want to see some people's criticisms. Um, I agree completely with Shelby here. The idea that if you want to do something hard and make it easy at first seems more manageable. Yeah, it's all about the idea of building up habits, because if you try to, right, it's if you're trying to achieve a goal, once you've achieved that goal, it feels like, okay, you've achieved the goal. Now what? Now you take a break. Now you stop doing the goal. Or is the thing that you want to achieve something because you want it to be part of your life forever? So, like, I, it's like when I, people talk about, like, working out, some people are like, you know, once I lose 50 pounds, I'll be good. And then they lose 50 pounds and then they gain it back, right? Like, notoriously, diet, diet, the diet world doesn't work because that's what they incentivize. It's very unhealthy. And this book talks about, well, if you want to work out, you know, identify yourself as a person who likes to work out. Identify yourself as an athlete. Talk about that. And then it'll be something you'll want to do every day. Make it something that you have committed to doing for the rest of your life and not just until you've achieved a goal, right? So that those things don't feel like work. So that's like an example. Um, 
let's take a look at various reviews of it. I gave it four stars. Uh, ba, 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 ba. So the first review is three stars from Simon. He does a great job laying down the framework of how habits are formed and shares insightful strategies for building good habits and breaking bad ones. I was already familiar with the research behind habit formation. Reading through this book helps me form approachable habits. All right. I mean, so far, so good. The book suffers from the same problems that seem to plague all self-help books. In the chapter about tracking habits, the author shares an anecdote about Benjamin Franklin's habit of carrying a journal everywhere to track 13 virtues. If you care to know more about that story, Franklin tried to make a habit of his 13 virtues by turning it into a 13 week course. Oh my God. We have talked about doing a Benjamin Franklin week at one point. Because Benjamin Franklin is a fucking business guru, dude. He's like, I guess he's Benjamin Franklin is proof that like serial entrepreneur business guru types have been around for forever. <laughs> this is not a new phenomenon. You know, sodium and spite, this is a good point. How it it brings up habits are good or bad. Uh, and that's kind of a dichotomy. I always think when things try, they try to break things into a black or white dichotomy. That's always, you know, a little surface level. There's not a lot more. There's always more to the story than that, right? So he'll talk about like, you know, building good habits or building bad habits or things like that. I think it would make more sense to talk about like building habits that serve your overall desired uh, outcomes and building habits that work against your desired outcomes, right? Because a habit can be good or bad depending on what your desired outcome is, right? So like the making a habit of working out every day is, is only a good habit if working out every day is something you value, right? So I think boiling every habit down to good or bad is a little reductive. I completely agree with that point. Um, Yes, exactly. Like Katie says right here, Katie, this is perfect. I talk about habits that serve you and habits that don't serve you when I talk with my flute students. Right, exactly. Yeah, it's like saying food is good or bad. All, food is neutral by default. And then if you, you want to talk about, is this food going to serve the purpose I need right now? Or is it not going to serve the purpose I need right now? So last night I ate a piece of boob cake that my mom made. The purpose that I wanted was to celebrate getting my boob surgery. And that boob cake served that purpose. If I had eaten that for every meal, it would not have served my purpose of eating high protein for the sake of retaining muscle growth and healing from the surgery. So I ate multiple types of foods that none of them were good or bad, but what they serve different purposes at different times. So you want to say, does this serve the purpose you're going for? That kind of thing. So yeah, I completely agree with that approach. Um... And I like seeing this from Sodium. So Sodium and Spite uh, worked as a therapist for a while. So it's fun to see their take on some of this and how it affects uh, mental health or the ways that we process things. I appreciate getting to see your perspective. Sodium and Spite says, when talking about undoing habits that no longer serve you, it's important to be compassionate with the version of you who built that habit out of survival or resources. Yeah, I think that's a great way to look at it too. Not to, I think a lot of times when we try to go through self transformations, we end up being hard on our past self or being hateful toward our past self and thinking like, oh, this version of me sucked. When it's like, no, that version of you did a lot of good things. That's that's something I even need to remember for myself. Like, but like now I put a lot of value on being strong and working out and being in shape. But if you look at me early 2021 or end of 2020, I wasn't, I was a very out of shape at that point. And it's very easy for me to look back on that and be like, oh, that version of me sucked. I've come so far since then. But then if I remember, like, no, like, I need to look at that version of me and say, I had to first focus on building the foundations of getting, of, of managing a business in the pandemic, of getting myself to a financially stable place where I was making money, making money and being able to continue being an entrepreneur during a time of all this unrest and it wasn't until I was able to get to get that part down that I was able to start focusing on other things. So I think it's important to remember that. Um, completely agree. Um, okay. So yeah, it says, so this review is talking about how it suffers from the same problems that tra that plague all self-help books. So Benjamin Franklin's habit of carrying a journal everywhere. If you care to know about it, 
uh, Franklin tried to make a habit of his 13 virtues by turning into a 13 week course where he would work on a different virtue every week and track his progress. The author conveniently leaves out the fact that Franklin quickly found this method impractical and abandoned the project before getting through all 13 virtues. There's a lot of irony in including this anecdote in a chapter that talks about the importance of not breaking the chain. Yeah, so I think there were some, some that is one valid criticism of this book is I think there were some parts in it where it didn't tell the complete story. I think one of the other ones was about the cycling team. I think it was later found that the one cycling, like there's the story about the cycling team. Hold on. Let me look it up. I don't want to say the wrong thing. Later it was found. Yes. And I do appreciate that the author updated this on the website. Um, I don't know if it would have made sense to do a reissue of the book without that chapter or something. But so if you guys have read, uh, it, this is one, it's towards the beginning of the book. It's one of the earlier chapters. He talks about the British cycling team and how the team was struggling a lot. Um, and what they had to put into practice were these small habits every day to make the team better. And then this came out. Um, he says, I'm going to provide more detail about the British cycling team. The first chapter of Atomic Habits is not about cycling, but rather about how habits compound over time, which is true. Um, the story of the British cycling is more complicated than I originally believed when I was writing Atomic Habits, and thankfully I was able to squeeze in the footnote in chapter one before the book went to the printer, which allowed me to provide additional context and updates here. I first heard the story, of course it's a fucking Dave. Of course it's a fucking Dave. I first heard the story about Dave Brailsford, British Cycling, and the aggregation of marginal gains sometime in 2013. At that time, the group was fresh off winning their first Tour de France in 2012 and a boatload of gold medals at the 2012 Olympics in London, shortly after I wrote about their success in an article. One year later, I began working on Atomic Habits, and the article about British cycling became part of the manuscript. To be honest, I didn't say up-to-date on cycling results or watch future races after that original article. I write about a wide variety of topics, and I spent the next few years continuing my research and writing about habits. Cycling news wasn't a major part of that pro process. However, as I was preparing my final edits on the book, I returned to the British cycling section and did some fact-checking. I verified the total number of gold medals and Tour de France titles won by British cyclists, as well as other details of the story. Dave Brailsford, British Cycling, and Team Sky have continued their success after my initial article, winning five of the last Tour de France events with three different riders, capturing dozens of gold medals, and setting many Olympic and world records in the process. However, they have also been the subject of recent scrutiny, and many people are questioning whether they've achieved marginal gains in areas outside of the boundaries set by the rules. Some British riders use drugs for therapeutic ex therapeutic use exemption, also known as TUE. These drugs would normally be banned from cycling, but if a rider has a medical reason for using the drug, then an exemption is granted. The most notable case involved intramuscular injections received by Bradley Wiggins before his Tour de France victory in 2012. The concern is that British Cycling not only use TUEs for their intended medical purpose, but also in an effort to gain a performance edge. Shane Sutton, a former British Cycling coach, said, if you've got an athlete that's 95% ready and that little 5% injury that's troubling, if you can get that TUE to get them to 100%, yeah, of course you would in those days. This type of sentiment naturally has many people wondering how often British riders relied on the uh, performance enhancement uh, rather than for medical necessity. Not all British riders have been accused of these actions, and technically speaking, the British team didn't break any world anti-doping agency rules with these injections, but the general feeling is that the British cycling team tried to game the system and squeak out an extra advantage that the rules were not intended to provide. The second issue involved British writer Chris Frome, who has won multiple Tour de France titles. At one point, he was found to have almost twice the allowed dose of salbutamol, an asthma medication, in his system. In this case, he was in excess of the World Anti-Doping Agency limit, which is an obvious violation. The day I'm writing this update, October 16th, public, uh, October 16th, 2018, is the publication day for Atomic Habits. As of today, the investigations into British cycling are still ongoing and remain unresolved. I try to maintain a fairly even-handed approach in my writing, but I will say that it is hard to believe that the British cycling team is entirely clean, given the details of these cases and the history of the sport. Many people are familiar with the story of Lance Armstrong and his doping scandal. There have been many others in the history of cycling as well. And if you watch films like Icarus, a fantastic documentary, by the way, you can see how uh, deeply doping has infected not only cycling, but also the sports industry as a whole. Although I learned about the details of British cycling scandal too late to alter the story in the book, I felt it would be irresponsible for me to not include a note about the scandal and an update on publication day discussing the current situation. So I I do appreciate that he, he added the footnote in the book. I listened to it on Audible, so I didn't hear the footnote, but I'm assuming 
the maybe the uh, ebook links to this, and I imagine the the physical book would include a footnote telling you to go to this website to read this. Um, so I do appreciate that he, uh, when he realized something in the book had more of a story to it than he was originally saying, I appreciate that he uh, went into it and, and bothered to do this. Um, at the same time, it definitely was an incomplete story. And this is tough. Like, I don't know what, I don't know what I would say about this. He was in a tough situation, right? So the book, he didn't, he used this example in the book. None, like none of the editors caught it. He, he was fact checking and didn't come across it. And then he didn't come across this information until like right before the book had to go to the printer. I will say in book publishing, when it's about to go to the printer, it's tough to make a lot of changes. So really the footnote was, I think, the best he could do at this point. So I don't blame the author for this. But I think it does speak a little bit to the fact that with a lot of the stories, like with a lot of the principles in the book, I think they make a lot of sense and I can apply them to my life. But with a lot of the stories, it's like like the Ben Franklin thing, like this story. A lot of the stories aren't fully complete. So I think that's a valid criticism of the book. Um, let's see. Let's see what uh, what the comments say. Boop, 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 boop. Sarah says, my therapist as a kid had a sign that said a bad habit can't be broken. It has to be slowly coaxed down the stairs. I like that. I like that. I like that. Uh, do, do, do. Friday Greenlaw says, I'm autistic and have ADHD, but I wasn't diagnosed until age 30 last year. For so long, I've been labeled as lazy, unmotivated, weirdo, etc. It makes it hard to view my past self with compassion. I'm really sorry you had to deal with that. Yeah, I think a lot of, a lot of, uh, there's a lot of issue with like undiagnosed neurodivergence or mental illness or various things like that. I, I remember I struggled. I didn't get diagnosed with OCD until I was 23. And when I did, uh, and started medication it changed my life completely. Um, yeah, Clary T says, I knew exactly how this was going to go. Cycling is full of this stuff. Larissa says, Lance Armstrong blood doped a bunch too. Uh, boop, boop, doo, doo, doo. Uh, Sprightly one says, for what it's worth, even when PDAs are used in sport, you still have to do the work. So there's still the merit of habit. And I think I, I think there's some validity to that. Like I think the the point that the story in the book is making overall that is that the team you know found success through building small habits. Even if you d used, I don't fully understand how doping works, but apparently a lot of cyclists were doing it. Even if you did that, you still do have to do the rest of the work too. Um, so it's not to say that the habits they built were invalid in any way. I think it's this, the, it still serves the purpose of showing habit building, but I definitely see how the story's undermined through, through learning that it's, it's, it's a little complex, but uh, my whole point with that was to say that like with, uh, with the Goodreads review that was talking about how it didn't tell the complete story about the Ben Franklin 13 weeks thing, I think there are some issues with some of the examples used being kind of incomplete not, and uh, that being to the book's detriment, even though I find the ideas in the book very useful. I think you can have a mix of both. Uh... Let's see. All right, let's uh, let's take a look at a little more here. So it says, well, the, so these, this, this reviewer is talking about the Benjamin Franklin story and says, well, the author isn't entirely wrong. I found it off-putting that he would retell the story in a manner that fit his narrative. This is a vice that is found all too commonly in self-help. That is true. That is true. We see that very frequently in self-help books where, you know, the author uses an event or something in a way that specifically fits their story, even if it doesn't, like, even if it's less true to the original spirit of what happened. 
Another criticism I have of this book is that it could have been shorter. The last few chapters under advanced tactics that deal with the topic of mastery were the weakest in the book. Well, there's an obvious connection between habits and mastery. Trying to tie in a topic as complex as mastery is perhaps too ambitious. I don't even remember the end of the book. I'll have to I'll have to wait until I re-listen to that part. I listened to the whole thing a few months ago, but I don't remember the end at all. Um, there are some parts about it that I find really impactful that we'll talk about. Um, so this person really likes the book. Um, you don't rise to the level of your goals. You fall to the level of your uh, level of your systems. I think that is a good quote. This is something that um, when I was in grad school, I heard some writing professors talk about too, that, you know, writing is not about goals, but about, it's about systems. Um, it's not about, do you have a goal to write an entire book? It's about, do you have the system of, do you know, are you most productive when you handwrite? Are you most productive when you type? Uh, do you have a plan in mind? Do you have, do you have a regular system? And so I think that there is, there is a lot to say for focusing, like a lot of gurus like to focus on the end goal, on the manifestation. I think there's something to be said for, um, talking about the system instead, talking about your path for getting there, uh, and those kind of things. Um, doo -doo -doo. the best way to build a habit is to make it part of your identity. I completely agree with this. And I'm going to be, that's a big point I'm going to bring up on Friday when we do the book discussion. I think making a habit a part of your identity is a huge way to make it something you do for life instead of just do in service of one goal or something like that. Um, I do. Yeah, I agree that the length of the book is good. Someone mentioned it could have been even shorter. I think the length of the book is pretty good. It's like on Audible, if you listen to it on 1.6 speed, it's like three hours. If you listen to it on 2x speed, it's like two and a half hours or something. It's I don't know how many pages it is, but that's what it is on Audible. I think it's pretty, pretty good length. Some some books are just way too long. All right, so a lot of people are enjoying the book, which I agree. I agree. Um, this person really disliked it. Let's see what they didn't like about it. The more pride you have in a particular aspect of your identity, the more motivated you will be to maintain the habits associated with it. And I do, I agree about that. If you're proud of how your hair looks, you'll develop all sorts of habits to care for and maintain it. If you're proud of the size of your biceps, you'll make sure you never skip an upper body workout. If you're proud of the scarves you knit, you'll be more likely to spend hours knitting each week. Once your pride gets involved, you'll fight tooth and nail to maintain your habits. I thought that this was a good quote. Okay, this person doesn't like this quote. I actually did like this quote. And I'll say why. This person was talking about like, you know, when, when trying to get people in the habit of voting, uh, people think about, okay, do I think, oh, I need to go vote because that's an important thing I need to do as an American. It's important for to, to participate in democracy. I better go vote. Or are people, people are often more motivated to vote if they think of themselves as like, I'm a well-informed person. I care a lot about society. I care a lot about the political landscape. This is something that's important to me. I'm a smart person. And I think, I think that I, I have important values that need to be, need to help influence how our country goes forward. When you make that like a core part of who you are, you will never skip voting because it's going to be a top priority for you. If that's an important part of your identity to skip voting would be like, would be like insane. Right. And that's one thing he mentioned there. Uh, he talked about a guy who used to bite his nails and then one day he got a manicure and he liked how his nails looked so much that it like suddenly part of his identity became being a guy with nice nails. So it motivated him to not want to bite them. Uh, and that's like, that's the thing I talked about. To, um, it's the thing when I, that I talked about in one of my videos, right? How when I posted on r slash roast me, one guy as an insult told me you're built like a Polish power lifter. And I was like, how is that an insult? I am a Polish power lifter. And when I said that, I was like, that does sound like the right identity for me. And since then, that's been part of my identity. So every day I practice speaking Polish and, and every day other than when I'm, I mean, not now because I'm doing I'm recovering from surgery but before that I got I, I worked on I always did my upper body workouts I always did my weightlifting. I made sure to do that constantly every uh week I would go see my trainer at the gym and work on uh compound lifts with squats and deadlifts and things like that because I'm like well if I'm if I'm a Polish power lifter I then it's important that I do the things that are associated with that if that's an identity that makes sense for me Right. So that, that was kind of, that was like a turning point for me. I was like, 
I was like, wait, why would you insult me with this? That is my identity. And then I was like, well, then I should really make sure I'm keeping up those habits. Um, Jen says, that's how tattoos are for me. I take better care of my skin so they'll age well. That's, that's awesome. That's a great, that's a great motivation. I want to get some more tattoos. I need to get some more. Okay, but this this reviewer, let's just give this reviewer the benefit of the doubt. This reviewer doesn't like that quote. I do like that quote, but I'm sure it's not going to work for everyone. So let's see. Um, it's been quite an unlucky year when it comes to personal development. I keep picking up these tired pop psychology books because of the hype, hoping that I'll at least be entertained, but I just end up being disappointed. I should know better by now. This one was no exception. It's the same superficial regurgitated information I've been stumbling upon in the productivity blogosphere for the past 10 years. The main flaw was the execution. Robotic writing, highly repetitive, and it gets taken out of context to conveniently prove the author's point. Yeah, I, I will agree that that the, some of the stories in the book could have been better. The main ideas in here are not bad, but they're already covered by others in greater depth and with more skill. Okay, I hadn't heard of Kelly McGonigal or George Leonard, but I'll have to look them up and take a look at their books. Um... The world really needed to hear another privileged marketer with an A-type personality telling people they can become like him if they follow his secret formula. I didn't really get that vibe from this book, but I guess if you think, like, it didn't really feel like a secret formula. It felt like a completely logical way to build habits. He didn't, I, I don't know. It did, Like, I didn't get that vibe at all. But if, if this person did, like, that's valid. Um... This person says, I met several people who adored this book and swore it changed their life, only to find out years later that they did not, in fact, stick to any new habits they picked up after reading this book. I don't know. To be fair, I only read the book a couple months ago, but I've been sticking to my habits for a while. Well, we'll reconvene in a year and see if I'm still working out regularly, still practicing Polish every day, still uh, doing all the habits that I track in my planner and all of that. Um... This person also didn't like it, saying reading this book feels like a homework assignment. James Clear wanted to read a lot of books and make a summary of the concepts he would implement for self-improvement. Yeah, I think there, I think the criticisms of like the storytelling of the book are valid. I think the storytelling is a little surface level and incomplete. And also not, he doesn't tell things in a super interesting way. But I think that the, con I like the concept still. Again, that's why I gave it four stars. It's not a perfect book, but I think it's genuinely helpful. Um... Um, yeah, this book, this person likes it, saying it's the only book on habits. You should read it, lays out all the rules of changing, developing habits in a simple, straightforward way and gets right to the point without a bunch of rambling and seemingly unrelated filler chapters. I, I agree with that. It, it felt very to the point. This person, oh yes, this person has a four star review. Let's see if they feel the same way I do because I gave it a four. I gave a four star rating too. I received this book as a Goodreads giveaway yesterday and immediately settled down to read it. I'm always very skeptical of self help books because they often do not get to the root of the issues. I completely agree with this. Completely agree, and I, I agree that this one actually did a better job at getting to the root of issues than most self help books did. So so far, Caitlin. Caitlin, who wrote this review, you and I are on the same wavelength. As Toilet Frog would say, same. Dave length. <laughs> uh, James Clear's main arguments are that habits are the compound interest of self-improvement and that your identity emerges out of your habits. So you must experience a shift in identity for your habits to hold. This made a lot of sense to me, but I do think that Clear should have addressed deeper emotional issues and gave readers resources so as not to mislead them into believing they can change their identity by action, repeating new habits alone. Caitlin, shout out to Caitlin. I agree with every single word of her review. I agree that the book is worth four stars. I agree that the book did a better job of getting to the root of issues than any other self-help book I've read. And I agree that the writing needed to get a little deeper on the emotional level. Shout out Caitlin on Goodreads. I'm going to give this a like. Great job. Great job on that review. So I will end my Goodreads reactions with that. I hope RK is coming back. He mentioned that he got on a call that said it was only going to be a minute, but it ended up going longer. I know that there's a lot of a lot of weird stuff going on right now, so I, I hope everything's okay with him. I'm sure he'll, if he's not back, I'll just uh, end the stream and what is up with my hair? Where is it going? It's like all over the place right now. That's okay. I'll deal with that later. Um, 
Yes, it is better written than Jamie, Jamie Lynn Spears' book. is so It's so fucking boring. It's so fucking boring. Um, Starry Knight says, I think there are issues with making something superficial part of your personality. What would you do if that was taken from you? That is a good point. I think, I think there's, uh, I think that's kind of, I think there's multiple sides to that issue, right? I don't think that it's always bad to make something about your appearance part of your personality, because I think that there are a lot of appearance related interests and hobbies, like, you know, people who like to be makeup artists or something. If you enjoy being a makeup artist and you love how it makes your face look and then you get in an accident and your face looks different and you're not able to wear makeup anymore because of some health reason or something, that would suck. That I mean, that would really suck. That would really suck that you're basically a big part of you has to change. But I don't think that for the time you had that interest or that passion that it was wrong to. Like, I really, I enjoy bodybuilding. I like looking at pictures of women who are able to put on tons of muscle and I want to be able to do that. If I, like right now, I can't do that, right? Because I'm recovering from surgery. If permanently, if one day I got into an accident, I permanently couldn't do that anymore. I would be really sad about that. But it doesn't mean I don't think I should pursue it now. You know, I think it just depends where your passion lies. And then if your life changes, if something awful happens that changes the trajectory of your life, you might have to readapt in some way. Um, and find something new. And that's one reason I think it's always good to have multiple interests and multiple passions, because there is a, a chance that something you love could get taken away from you. And then it's important to be able to uh, find something else that you love. Lindsay says, my main issue with the book is that he didn't, so can you. I see him as a strong, attractive white dude who has every advantage. I, th I think that's fair, too. You, you don't often see a lot of self-help books being written by people who have had like systemic disadvantages. We don't read a lot of books about people who started off in extreme poverty. Like we, like Rachel Hollis started off in poverty, but she married rich. So it's like, okay. We don't see a lot of books written by people who started off poor and didn't marry rich, right? And I don't know if that would be somewhat a level of survivorship bias or something. Uh, so it makes it a little hard that all, kind of all the self-help books are like that, or when there's a self-help book written by someone who has the, the rags to riches story or whatever, it ends up being like that book's main selling point. And there's often still an element of luck involved. So none of this is going to be universally applicable. I understand the criticism there too. Clary T says, I'd like to know how many people stick to their new habits after the book on average. I would too. I'd be interested to know that. I'd be interested to know that. Um, I would be very interested in that. Lisa says, very grateful for all the compassionate, lovely friends in the chat. Oh, I, I would like to say I'm very grateful for everyone in this chat, too. You guys are all really fantastic. I love some of the discussions that we have here. Uh, we always get into some really interesting topics. Um, do, do, do. Yeah, I agree. So Friday says my hair is very curly. It's one of the few things about me that doesn't cause me dysphoria. I'd be devastated for some reason I lost my hair and my curls, but for now I'm just grateful to have them. I think that's another valid way to look. Like I love my curly hair too. I love my curly hair so much. And as a result, I like taking care of my curly hair. I like looking up, you know, curly hair tutorials and different products to use and things like that. Um, so if one day I had an illness where I lost my hair or something, like I would hate to have that part of my identity taken away from me, but that doesn't mean I can't value it and appreciate it now. I think there's nothing wrong with people's identities evolving throughout life, too. I didn't identify as a Polish power lifter 10 years ago. So I think it's just, it's totally fine if elements of who you are and what you value and what you're passionate about change. At the time, it's just important to pursue the things that you value the most. Shelby says, my identity boils down to being kind and helping others. So everything else can flux. Someone who likes to write and paint. I don't know how you quantify stuff like that. Yeah. And I think that if you have like a, some of the root of your identity is like being kind to other people, being a good person. Well, I think you probably would want to be a little more specific than just saying being a good person. But like, if you talk about being kind to others, 
doing um, doing others favors, being someone who's reliable, who other people can count on. And that's one of the things the book does talk about is like, if you want to be a writer, you think about, okay, what kind of person is a writer? A writer is often someone reliable, someone who can produce a lot of things on a regular basis. So a lot of times part of the identity is being someone who's reliable. And that's something that you can always maintain. You can always maintain being reliable. Um... Curl Smith products. I'll have to look those up. I love using Shea Moisture products for curly hair. Um, one main reason being that they're not animal tested. Uh, so I get those a lot. I love the that they're cruelty free. Um, and I use their hair. I use their conditioner and their hair smoothie. Uh, Laura says, a little late to the convo, but even non-looks things could be taken away from you. And musicians sometimes I worry about getting arthritis and not being able to play anything. That's true. That's true. There's definitely stories of musicians that have had to put their music career on hold or have had to retire because of physical issues. And those things are are very sad. So yeah, I think, I think it's important to value what you want to value. And if something in your life changes where that thing can't be part of your identity anymore, uh, to like uh, Sodium and Spite was saying, look at your look at that past version of you with compassion and appreciate that past version of you and also continue to find what you value going forward. Um, awesome. So y'all, we have 69 viewers in the chat right now, which is why it's a perfect time to wrap up the stream. Shout out to our 69 viewers. You guys are great. Tomorrow, I think we will delve a little bit into the Habitica app. I know a lot of you guys started talking about it and using it. Um, I added it to my phone. And so I think I will, I think we will delve into that. I will try playing it and going through it a little bit today. We can go through it tomorrow and see how it works and talk about what it's doing for us. I want to see how that works as well, because I'm enjoying building habits. I think it's very fun. Uh, so thank you guys all in the chat for watching today. Thank you for the great conversation. Thank you for sharing your views on everything. It's been a lovely discussion. We'll talk about Habitica tomorrow. And then on Friday, we will have our big book discussion of Atomic Habits. And that's the day that all of you guys are welcome to come on the stream with us and share your thoughts out loud. So anyone who's interested in participating in the book discussion, be on the lookout in Reddit and in Discord. We will post a link to join this stream. So I will see you guys again tomorrow morning. Keep on supporting small businesses. Keep on building your habits. Have a great start to your Thursday. 